Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and we're going to talk about the Dungeons & Dragons community overall being um, very fixated on the past in a very unhealthy way, and and as well, and also the tabletop role-playing game community as well. And actually, I will say the Dungeons and Dragons community. I don't think there's an. I, I do not think there is any useful or real distinction between the tabletop role playing game community and the Dungeons and Dragons community. Now, yeah, I'll, I'll get into that real quick. Um, there's the number of tabletop role players who have not played Dungeons and Dragons and are not comparing their current game to Dungeons & Dragons and because Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition is so dramatically dominant in the in the community they're they're just I would say maybe 5% at best of all um, tabletop role players have not played Dungeons & Dragons and are not thinking about Dungeons & Dragons even as they're playing non Dungeons & Dragons games because the comparisons are just so you know, because there's so much dominance on Dungeons and Dragons, I, I don't really think there's any meaningful or or significant distinction between the tabletop role playing game community and the Dungeons and Dragons community. You are either are a player of Dungeons and Dragons right now at some percentage. You are a very dedicated Dungeons and Dragons player. You are a Dungeons and Dragons player who has moved on to other games, but still started with Dungeons and Dragons and will always compare their game to Dungeons and Dragons and have players sitting next to you who are going to be comparing it to Dungeons and Dragons. There's just, there really isn't enough momentum, force, power in any of the tabletop role-playing games to escape the orbit of Dungeons and Dragons. So there's no meaningful distinction between the tabletop role-playing game community and the overall Dungeons and Dragons community, which I split into D&D then, uh, D&D now, 5e, D&D then, um... D&D 1E, 2E, 3E, and 4E, and D&D Not, which are copies, generally, of D&D 1E and 2E that are not Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, Good examples of those would be OSE, Index Card RPG, Five Torches Deep, DCC. That's D&D Not, in my opinion. Okay. All right. So, um, so basically, there, okay, so let's talk about a very unhealthy, um, just incredibly dedicated uh, dedicated just a, an unhealthy dedication to uh, to the past all right so here we go um, I think it was Ian world there was a major site and they they took a, po- a poll and said what is the most anticipated tabletop new tabletop role-playing game of 2022 you know what the most anticipated tabletop role-playing game of 2022 is? <sighs> Wait till you see here this Blade Runner 20 Blade Runner tabletop role playing game. Licensed game coming out of Modifius. They're going to do a fantastic job with it, I think. They've done a great job with um oh, you know what? Free League has um so I you know what? Is this coming? Yeah, I think this is coming from Modifius. It may be Free League, but I think it's I think it's Modifius. So Blade Runner coming coming from Modifius, right? And, um, you know what, it could definitely be Free League because Free League has done an amazing job with Alien, right? So it's either Modifius or Free League. Apologies, both of them are European um, uh, creators, and I'm just getting confused in my head right now. But this is Blade Runner, is the most anticipated new tabletop role-playing game of the year. Now, there's so many problems here. One, a licensed game should not be the most anticipated game of the new year. And the reason why is it's it's been done. Right? It's just it's the same content in a new medium, right? It's a great new medium and it's exciting, right? But I would much rather you know a game like Overlight or an original IP, you know, a, a world that's coming from um, you know from tabletop role playing games. And trust and believe there are plenty of them in 2022, and people just aren't excited for them, right? And one of the reasons why is. If you want a new tabletop role-playing game today, it's hard. It is incredibly hard to get people to play it. You just, you know, and, and again, one of the reasons why is D&D really captures the vast majority of all players' excitement. 
right? And so it's it's very difficult to bring. And if you check, virtually every indie in the world right now is making content for 5e, right? Like if you got a world, you're like, oh well, I'm just gonna convert it over to 5e because people have a chance of playing it, right? But okay, so first of all, it's licensed over original content. That's not good. But from a um, from a history perspective, oh boy, let's get into it. All right. Not only is this an old property, okay, of you know uh, coming from I think I think maybe like 1986 for Blade Runner, and then one sequel like three or four years ago by Denis Villeneuve. So that's, you know, that's a significant, that's significant time just from when the movies came out. And of course this was, uh, written, this, these are essentially cyberpunk. Um, they're very similar. It's actually Blade Runner, I think, uh, specifically was from Philip K. Dick and he wasn't writing specifically cyberpunk because, um, cyberpunk was invented by William Gibson, but this is old 60s, 70s, like science fiction then launched as films right and i think that you know almost certainly the um the tabletop role playing game is going to come from the book i love blade runner right but this is very unhealthy right and so basically it's old content and then even beyond that blade runner its future has already passed we are past the date of blade runner right and blade runner is is a failed wrong future, right? So this is going to be people playing a future that's already been passed, right? So this is an incredible dedication to old, right? And this is how Dungeons and Dragons dies. This is how tabletop role playing game dies by myopically focusing on old, right? We have got to stay on the new and tell people this is a relevant hobby for now, right? And I'm just so frustrated with a bunch of old heads sitting around saying, I don't care if this dies with me. It is an insult to Gary Gygax. It is an insult to all the American tabletop role-playing game designers that have have built um, tabletop role-playing games. And it is incredibly frustrating and we need to let this go and we really need to be prioritizing new content over ip over over licensed content right and we very much need to be telling current relevant new stories it terrifies me that the most that people are most excited about an old content ip cover right and literally a future that has already passed, right? Like, you know, the, the scroll over in, um, in, in Blade Runner is 2020, right? It, this is a future we've literally passed, right? And yet this is what the tabletop role-playing game community is most excited about. So my point is I desperately want tabletop role-playing game to grow and this is wrong everyone who said i'm excited about blade runner for as the most anticipated game of 2020 you're shockingly wrong and you're threatening the health of the hobby in my opinion okay so please you know grow like don't hold on to the past it's not a healthy like it's not a healthy fixation and we need to grow as people That's my opinion. I'd love to hear yours. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.